Well, Sheridan Hills, it's good being with you today. We are continuing through our summer series that we have called The Attributes of God in Everyday Life. We've been going through this series for several weeks now, and today we want to consider God's mercy. So the attributes of God, as we have seen in the past, are the characteristics of God. Different attributes come together to paint a big picture of who God is. So we've seen attributes like the holiness of God or the imminence of God or the goodness of God. And these attributes, as they come together, as they have come together throughout the summer, are starting to paint a big picture of who God is. Kind of like a mosaic where different shapes and colors come together, but then they paint a picture that makes sense. We've seen that the attributes of God are normally divided into the incommunicable attributes, meaning those attributes of God that He does not share with us. Some think of them as God's greatness. So, for example, God is eternal, we are not. God is all-knowing, we are not. God is all-powerful, we are not. But there are also the communicable attributes of God. These attributes, God does share with us. So, some think of these attributes as God's goodness. So, God is love, and He calls us to love as well. And God is kind, and He calls us to be kind as well. Today we're going to consider one of God's communicable attributes, one of those attributes that He shares with us. We're going to consider God's mercy. But what is God's mercy? What is the mercy of God? God's mercy is God's goodness applied to us, right? So, so the mercy of God flows out of the goodness of God. It is true that God is good, right? But we can also say God is good to us. Right? Do you see the difference? It, 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 is, it is the goodness of God intersecting with our life. And why do we need this goodness applied to us? Why do we need God's mercy? We need God's mercy because of our sin. Psalm 130 verse 3 and 4 says this. If you, O Lord should mark iniquity, should mark my sins. So in other words, if you, O Lord, should remember, right, punish me for my sins, O Lord, who could stand? And the answer is clear, no one. But with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. So one way to define the mercy of God is when God withholds the punishment that we deserve. We should be punished for the sins that we have committed. Every sin that we commit is a sin against God. Every sin that we commit has eternal consequences. But God withholds that punishment because of His mercy. Now let's unpack this idea of mercy a little bit. Let's think about mercy in the name of God. God doesn't just have mercy. Mercy is is part of who God is. Mercy flows out of God. You see, when Moses, right, in the book of Genesis, in the book of Exodus, when Moses uh, receives the law of God, he goes down to give the law to the people and he realizes the people are, are idolizing an image. Uh, Moses, in his an anger, justified anger, breaks the law that the Lord had given him. And he goes up to the mountain again to meet with the Lord. And the Lord renews his law with Moses. And, and as Moses is dealing with the Lord, the Lord says, the Lord comes to Moses and, and this happens. Exodus 34 verses 5 and 6. The Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. So what is the name of the Lord? The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious. 
You see, in the name of the Lord, right, that which represents God, that which flows out of God, there is His mercy. In Romans 9, as, as, as Paul is picking up this theme from the book of Exodus and developing a little bit, verses 15 and 16, about God, he says this, For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God who has mercy. The mercy of God does not depend on us. The mercy of God depends on Him. He gives it and He gives it freely. Another way that we could actually have translated this verse is uh, the mercy having God. Right? It's a title. Wh who is our God? According to Paul in Romans 9, He is the mercy having God. That is our God in mercy flows out of him what are some of the characteristics of god's mercy well god's mercy is eternal lamentations 3 22 through 23 the prophet says the steadfast love of the lord never ceases his mercies never come to an end you see that eternal they are new every morning Great is your faithfulness. So friends, we, as sure as we are that the sun is going to rise tomorrow, we can be certain that our God is a God of mercy and he will always be a God of mercy. God's mercy is universal. Matthew 5, 45 says this, For he makes the sun to rise on the evil and on the good. And sends rain on the just and on the, on the unjust. You see, God is kind to those who love him and to those who reject him. God shows his mercy through his providence to the just and to the unjust. All humans, to a certain extent, experience the mercy of God. But God's mercy is not cheap. God's mercy is not cheap mercy. God, God doesn't just show us mercy by overlooking our sin. Right? Remember in the beginning I said that we need mercy because we sin. And God withholds the punishment for our sin because of his mercy. But that withholding is not overlooking sweeping it under the rug, pretending that we never sinned. G God's mercy is costly. Here's why. Pastor Ben helped us understand last week a little bit more about the justice of God. And justice is a prerequisite for mercy. You know, say for example, I have two friends and one friend owes the other friend $1,000. I don't have the right to just come to my friend who is expecting the payment of that money and say, oh, he is forgiven. You shouldn't charge the other friend this money. You see, because the debt has to be paid. Or think of a judge. A, a judge who has someone who committed murder standing before him. And that judge says... I understand that your crime was very serious, but I forgive you. You need to go and you don't need to pay for your crime. Well, that is not mercy because it's void of justice. Mercy that is costly, mercy that comes from God deals with the sin. In Ephesians 2, verse 4 and 5, Paul says this, But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, made us alive together with Christ. Right? Where is the dealing with the sin here? Christ takes on 
the sins of those who trust in him. You see, God provided a sacrifice in the place of everyone who would come to Christ so that our sins would be punished on Christ. Paul says in in Colossians that our sins were nailed to his cross. And that's why he's able to say, by grace you have been saved. God's mercy brings salvation to everyone who believes in Christ. Later on in Titus 3, Paul says, But when the goodness and loving kindness of God appeared, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy. It is not our works who save us. It is the mercy of God. Jesus is our Savior who lays down His life so that we can experience the mercy of God. In the Old Testament, there is this interesting picture uh, of, of a mercy seat. Right? We, see, we see in the first five books of the Bible um, th- this, this place where God would come to meet the representative of his people, the priest. And, and, and it's an ark. It's an ark where the covenant of God was remembered. And on top of that ark, that was a, a seat called the mercy seat. You can, if, you want, if you want to know more about that, you can go back and read Exodus 25 or Leviticus 16. And, and on Leviticus 16, we see that there is a special day that God sets apart every year so that he can meet with his people through a representative. The, the priest would kill a bull and would sprinkle the blood of the bull on the mercy seat where he would come and meet God. And, on that, and, and, and that represented the sins of the people being atoned for, being paid for. Year after year, the priest would have to do this. But in the book of Hebrews chapter 9, the author of Hebrews tells us, but when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, right? Not through the tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not of this creation, right? Through his body, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. You see, while we, while the people of God, right, the Old Testament saints, depended on the blood, the temporary, the provisional blood of bulls and goats, we rest on the blood of Jesus Christ that was presented once for all. That is where we receive the mercy of God. Jesus Christ is our mercy seat. So what are some ways that we should, that that the mercy of God should affect or impact the way we live our lives? So first of all, friends, if you're listening to us today and you have not experienced the mercy of God, if if you've clicked on our channel or if you've received the link from a friend, let me just tell you, God wants to show his mercy to you through Jesus Christ. John 6, 37 says this, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. So if you're wondering, will God ever accept me? Will God ever accept me with my sinful, broken self? Friends, Jesus offers his mercy because he died to forgive you of your sins. So lift your burdens. Don't cling to things that will keep you from coming to God and come to Him through Jesus Christ, His Son. If you are a believer, come to Christ with confidence. Our prayer lives should be, should be character, characterized by confidence. 
Hebrews again says, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. But not only should we come to God for mercy, we should also extend mercy to others. You see, those who have received mercy will extend mercy. 2 Corinthians 1 verses 3 and 4 says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comforts, who comforts us in all our afflictions, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. The purpose of us receiving mercy is so that we can give mercy to others. So a question for you today is, um, do you need to forgive someone? Do you need to go and serve someone in need? Do you need to check on someone? Do you need to reach out to someone? Let us, let us reach out to those in need so that we can extend mercy to them, the mercy that we have received. A great way to start is in the very membership of Sheridan, or of Sheridan Hills Baptist Church. Let us be looking out for opportunities for mercy among ourselves. And let us look into our community groups. Let us check on them. Let us be with them so that we can serve them and we can be ushers of the mercy that we have received in Christ. Friends, may this encourage you to rest on the mercy of Christ and to extend mercy to others. Would you pray with me before we conclude our time together? Let's pray. Father, we thank you that um, through Christ we have experienced the eternal mercy of God. Lord, we're thankful that we don't have to fear you, but instead we can come to you with confidence as we're doing right now. Not because of our works, but because of the work done by Christ on our behalf. Father, I pray that because of the mercy of God, because of your mercy, Sheridan Hills Baptist Church would be a church that is known for the mercy it extends to others. We thank you, Lord, that we already experienced that in this church. Lord, I pray that this study today would spur us to greater faithfulness in our love, kindness, and grace that we offer to one another. Lord, we pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, we hope that this has encouraged you, and we hope that you will grow in your knowledge of the Lord, and you also grow in your experience of his mercy. May the Lord be with you, and we hope to see you on Sunday.